That's the feeling in our hearts. That's why we don't rest. Today we're talking about Sabbath and I'm gonna say that Sabbath is super important. So that's where I'm coming from. Let's see if you agree. Before we begin, hi, I'm Emily and I create Christ-centered conversations about topics missing from mainstream messages. So if that's your cup of tea, make sure to subscribe. And while you're at it, if you wanna follow along with the behind the scenes, whatever of my life, you can follow along on my Instagram, which will be linked down in the description box below. Without further ado, let's talk about rest. Let's just be clear. <laughs> Personally, I don't think that choosing to take a Sabbath is an option for the Christian. The reason why I say this is because it's a commandment, actually. And I think we kind of forget this sometimes because I don't know why. Because when you think about Sabbath, when you think about resting and not working for one day of the week, we're kind of like, yeah, yeah. We don't actually consider, we're not sitting down and praying and saying, God, how can I Sabbath well? How can I use this day of rest for you? But I think we need to do that because I think we're missing out. So anyway, it's a commandment. It's not a, hey, you should probably do this. It's in the Ten Commandments. And so these are like the things that we teach to children in Sunday school that they memorize and get extra points for memorizing. I don't know if that happened in your church, didn't mind. But what I'm trying to say is these are elementary. Even non-Christians know the Ten Commandments, but Christians don't even follow them all, which of course is the point of the commandments is that we can't follow them all. And so we need somebody who is able to follow them all. And that is Jesus. And he died for our sins so we could live forever. And that's awesome. Nonetheless, that doesn't mean that we don't strive towards holiness and strive towards following these commands that God has given, which are for our good and for his glory. So if that's how we believe the commandments are set up, even though they're in the Old Testament, let's get this right, the Old Testament law is not all in the past. What's the word? Obsolete. Christ didn't come and totally get rid of every single law. He didn't come and say, in the past, it said you couldn't murder, but I say you can. That's not what he said. He extrapolated on it. He said, it said not to murder. I say, don't even look at another brother with anger in your heart. When Jesus came, he didn't make everything in the Old Testament irrelevant to us. There are different categories of the law in the Old Testament. And one of those categories is moral law. One of those categories is civil law. One of those categories is sacrificial law. Some people will break it up differently, but that's how I've understood it. I don't know if you can hear that dog in the background. Okay, anyway. Um, every time I talk, it starts barking. So it literally just did it again. Anyway, so there are civil laws, which are laws that God gave to Israel that said, this is how you're gonna govern. This is how you're going to be set apart. This is how you as a nation, Israel, are going to look different from the other nations. And that was a good thing at that time, but those are things that we, as not the nation of Israel, do not need to follow, such as eating shellfish, fish, such as stoning people, such as, you know, wearing different kinds of linens and fabrics. Those are not laws that apply to us anymore because those were specifically for Israel. And then we have the sacri sacrificial laws, which said... You need to sacrifice this many times. You need to sacrifice these offerings. The, there are different types of offerings on different days of the year. We are not under the sacrificial law system anymore because Jesus was the ultimate perfect sacrifice. So we don't need to follow those. And then we have moral law. Moral law, actually, we do still need to follow because it's objective. It's for all time. What is right and good objectively for God's standards does not change. So if murder was wrong in the past, it is still wrong today. And so there are moral laws in the Old Testament, such as the Ten Commandments. And the Ten Commandments, based on basically everybody, are seen as moral laws. They're not seen as civil laws or sacrificial laws. They're seen as this is what's good and right and true. And these are the commands that you're going to uphold if you love me. No, not me. God, obviously, that's God talking. I'm really getting excited about all this law stuff, but that's not what I'm wanting to talk about. My only point in saying that is that the Sabbath is not just something in the Old Testament that we don't need to do anymore. 
it's something that we can do in freedom if we want to enter the rest of God. There are two reasons that I'm going to say that Sabbath is really good. First for you, then for others. And this is just, I mean, ah, it's just one of those things that's so exciting. Okay, first of all, for you, God created a day of rest for you. And yet we push it to the side and we say, God, I don't need it. I'm fine. I'm going to keep working and toiling and striving. And then we start Monday morning. We're like, man, I'm exhausted. Why am I so exhausted? Well, it's because you didn't Sabbath on Sunday. You didn't take the gift that God has given you of rest and use it well. And I will stop here to say, this is different for every person, obviously. The way that we rest is going to look different because the things that are work for us are going to look different. But that doesn't mean that we don't get to do it just because it looks different for different people. That's not true. Sabbath is a gift for us. So we need to be able to use it well. Part of using it well means understanding that the world does not revolve around you. If you stop working, things will be okay. If you don't have control over every aspect while you rest, it's going to be fine and it shows your trust in God. Sabbath is also a way of saying, Lord, I trust that if I stop working, you're the one that's holding the world together, not me. And so we think about Sabbath that way as a way of saying, Lord, I trust you with my life. And so I'm not going to do anything today because I know that you will handle it. It's an exercise in trust. Also, just putting this in there, God rested too. And part of not resting gets at this pride in our hearts that ultimately says, I don't need rest. I am better than God. And of course, we wouldn't say that. We wouldn't actually say that. But it really is what's true. That's the, that's the feeling in our hearts. That's why we don't rest. Okay, now let's talk about why it's good for other people. And the main reason why it's good for other people is because it's not normal. And we're called to be set apart as Christians. We're not supposed to look like the rest of the world. There should be something different about us, whether or not that can be pinpointed or not. We are different. One of the ways that we can show that we're different from the rest of the world is by taking intentional rest on Sundays, because not everyone does this. Also, if we rest in a way that honors God, if we rest in a way that is not just, I'm just sitting on the couch and watching TV all day, that's not rest. That's mind numbing. Rest is being in God's word. It's being in things that bring you joy, such as taking walks in nature, such as seeing his glory in the ocean, such as communing with friends, with fellow Christians, all getting together and saying, wow, God is good. But that's not what most of our Sundays look like, right? That's not what my Sunday looks like. Though I try sometimes, it doesn't, it doesn't look like that all the time. But what if it did? What if, okay, if every time this one person who does not know Jesus met a Christian and the Christian had a life that was full of rest, taking one day, setting it aside and saying, this day is holy unto the Lord and so I'm going to rest on this day. And every single Christian that met that person did that, they'd be like, hmm something's going on here. And I'd be curious if I didn't know Jesus and everyone who did was doing this one thing that seemed to make their lives so much better. That's the thing that I think we miss a lot of the time is that God is not always out for us to make our lives horrible. That's not what it is. Because to steal a line, God is most glorified in us when we are most satisfied in him. Satisfaction in him does not always mean that we are like hating our lives <laughs> and saying like, Lord, you're the only one. I hate my life. It can be, Lord, I'm so satisfied in you and in the gifts that you've given me. And I'm going to enjoy them. We can enjoy the good things that God has given and he has given us rest. He has given us a day of rest. So this week, don't put it to the side because it's good for you. It's God's gift for you and you're rejecting it. 
And also, you're rejecting an opportunity to show the people around you what it looks like to rest in God, to be totally satisfied in Him, to trust Him and say, I don't need to work because God's working for me. The world won't fall apart when I stop working. He's got it. I trust Him. And when we rest, we're better equipped to do whatever it is that we do on Monday mornings. Because we all do different things. And so this kind of rest is gonna look different for every single person. And I just wanna keep reiterating that because I'm not coming out here to say, this is how you need to rest. We can look at examples of other people, of how they rest. And I've said some of them, community with fellow believers, community with your family, getting outside, being in nature, doing things that bring you joy, not doing mind numbing things, things that just turn us off, taking time for prayer, going to church. These are things that are restful and we can do them with an attitude of rest. But sometimes what we get is we rush from one thing to the other, right? I mean, at least I do this sometimes on Sundays. I'll go to church and I'll come right back and I'll eat lunch and then I'll go to something else and I'll go to something else and I'll go to something else and all of a sudden it's eight o'clock on a Sunday night and I'm exhausted and I'm dreading Monday morning. But if I had taken that time to rest, I would feel differently. So please let me know in the comments, what are some ways that you practice Sabbath? Or if you don't yet, what are some things that you want to incorporate? It doesn't need to be an all out switch all of a sudden, just because you watch this video, just start, start somewhere. What can you incorporate into your Sunday that will glorify God and rest in him? Please let me know. I'm actually so curious. So thank you for watching. And until next week, have an awesome life.